In this video help tutorial, we're going to be moving from the application map. We're going to be going down, down all the way down, down, down to property, property list listing. listing. And you tap, tap this, this to take you, take you on the property listing. Property, the property listing, listing uh, indicates one thing that you need to be aware of. To have a property listing, the person that is in the listing has to be selling a, uh, the house or property or commercial business of some sort. So they would be set up in the customer records back on here in the customer data. There would be each one of these people. And as you notice, when you go through, say, for example, I pick Holland or ha and, uh, Hargrove. Hargrove would be, when you look at his customer data, should be a seller. In this case, he's, he's a buyer. Now, in the record, obviously, you would just click on it and he'd be a seller if he had a property and he was listing a property. The information for the property is actually identified as far as property notes from the one he's actually selling uh, in the actual record. So that would be the product. Now down here, obviously, it shows seller to contact date was not indicated in there yet, but we could have put anything in there. For example, back on September the 3rd would have been a good one and just leave it in there. And then when this property is actually sold, it will show sale made. And of course, there could be a photo of either the person or the home, either one. It doesn't make any difference. It's up to you. And of course, notes. But in order to make this function like it's supposed to, we need to go to the, uh, oops, trying to get this down so I could show it. You, you just click on here and then go to the uh, applicable map. Go in here and then come down past here and go to property listing. The first thing you do when you get into property listing, and we've already done it in the case of this one to save time, but basically what you'd be doing is you'd be creating a new record for the property listing information. The next thing you would do is you would come over to the select property and out of the people that were listed in the customer area, you would pick the property for the, that was being listed or a new listing was being done for. In this case, uh, 213 uh, Starlight Way, is this one right here. When I click on that, obviously it brings in the information for that particular listing. And then the property information would go in this screen. It's a second tab down. So now we'd put in all the information for that. It would already bring in Bill and put him in there. In this case, uh, he's listed by an agent. And if you wanted to see where the actual property was listed, basically what you would do is you'd have an MLRS number in your area and you would check for that MRLS number, and then drop in the actual URL for that particular uh, place where you're going to for that listing. If you click on this icon up here, it will take you to that listing and show it on the screen. And let's just go ahead and see what we get when we click on this. It'll bring it up. And in the case of this, it might take a second for it to, there it goes. It comes up and it starts showing you the listing. In this case, it's it's showing the listing. It may not be exactly the same one, but uh, for sampling and data and so forth, we'll go ahead and put it in here so you can see it. It's taking a little bit for it to come up. Basically, I'm doing things in the background that's taking some, uh, some of the bandwidth. So here's a picture of the distance shot and one close up to the entrance. And this is a townhouse, actually. That's what I'd call it for, two bedroom, two bath. Uh, 2070 square foot and so forth. And if you bring it down, it'll give you all the information from that website that's relevant for this particular thing. Now, this particular uh, URL that we're working off of is Zilla Apar uh, Apartments. In this case, it's a appointments. You could go in here and you could say, for example, install it on your device if you wanted to, or open the app, or and or put in a city or and or zip code to find areas where you might be looking as far as the uh, the location. If you click on Zilla by itself, it'll take you in and show you those screens so you can go ahead and bring it in. This is just one of probably a million different uh, uh, sites that you can go to, but Zillow, Z-I-L-L-O-W, is the actual location. The reason I like this place is that it does have a very good map, and basically what the map does if you go to, through this process, it'll take you, if you go back to Zillow, and you can uh, look at the map. The map has all the, the uh, la uh, properties in the same area. And what that'll allow you to do is it'll allow you to look at, see what other properties valued at, and they'll tell you what it sold out the last time in the year that it sold. And if it's brand new, it'll tell you it's a brand new listing and so forth. It gives you all kinds of really good information, like the mortgage and the, the uh, expense and all that kind of thing. So that would be very helpful if you know that uh, 
you have that kind of information with you. To get back, you basically come over here and tap Done, and it comes back into this listing. Now, you can compare the listing on the actual site. If you're the listing agent in this particular case, if you listed it, then all this information would be have to filled in here as to what it actually has as far as amenities and so forth. And that's, you can also go up here to this space. Now, in this particular case, what I did is I actually took the information that you just saw on the listing. I swept it, I copied it, and then I pasted it into here so that you can actually see the information that you're looking for uh, as far as technical data. Now, sometimes you might have to tap into the field to get it to start scrolling. In this case, I didn't take all the data. I just took what I needed to. And this says up here, the description was taken on 9-6-2012. Well, this is a bogus record, and I'm basically creating uh, example records. What you would do is take the first listing that you're creating, a new listing, make sure you put the customer data in the customer, then come over here, and if it's a seller, you would create the listing in the proper area with all the information and everything that's covered here. So that would be very helpful as far as the, uh, the listing is concerned. The next thing you want to look at, and let's, first of all, before we leave this, you would actually change the status to appropriately what it would be in this particular case. And you can also copy information from the fields, as you see up here. And you can change the style. I haven't gone into that yet, but basically, I wouldn't change the style on these things, but you can do it on fields that you feel it's important to do. Like you might want to hide, highlight it and bold it or do whatever you want to do. And in some cases, you can actually go in and highlight this and then change the color if you needed to emphasize it in using the styles up here at the top. Clicking out of that field and coming down here, if you click on the field for the guy's name, it's actually selected over in the select prop, uh, property. So you'd pick the select property person in here, and whatever you pick here, it will bring over. And you want to make sure if you have multiple listings for the same person that you make sure you get the, the correct uh, property number, and that's the actual client record ID that you're looking for there. Okay, so uh, let's go down to the next thing. We had the property listing information that we were working on here. Uh, we can go to the inspection sheet and the covered page for the uh, inspection sheet by clicking either one of these buttons and it would take you out of the screen to that screen. The information that here that you didn't have is the property listing. Now, if Mr. Uh, I think in this case was Hargrove, if Mr. Hargrove put his own information up in the records uh, for Mr. Hargrove, the record for here with the listing would have to be taken from this screen where you're actually typing in the property listing for the property that you're selling. And that's important to understand that. The other one might be property information for, uh, or I should say, location information for Mr. Bill Holland. As far as this uh, particular person's concerned, and Mr. Bill Holland's record would be his record in the customer data, and this would be for the house that he's actually listing. And that would be the information that's put in this screen. And it'd be the contra uh, contract date and the contract end date for the realtor, if the realtor is selling it, so you know if this listing is active or not. And the square footage, the dwelling age, the listed price, and any reduction price in the reduction. And then the reduction price, it wouldn't be the difference. Say, for example, this was selling for 421, and somebody, somebody wanted to offer it down, down to 422. That's, that's what would go in here. You wouldn't put the difference in value, like down 1,000 or down 10,000. That's the actual new listed rate on the reduced price. And I'm sure most people would recognize that. And if you scroll down here, now you can do things like double clicking uh, on areas to bring them in or in this case, double clicking to zoom it in. And when you're in the zoom in, you can scroll around the screen and get information. Now, when I double clicked, what it did is it closed the popover. So you'd have to come back in and reopen the popover. OK, so let's go down to the property photos. And this is exactly what it is. It's In this case, it shows a new construction. But I actually took the property when we were building our house here and used those photos. And what it does is I, I basically said what the actual photo was and what this is and so forth the kitchen you can do that all the way through here and you can add as many photos as you want in this slide so I could bring up another record and another and another and then over on the side I could make some remarks over here about the property and these these can also be copied and pasted from the URL, uh, MSR listing to put in this area if you need to or want to if you want to see the actual portal for one of these pictures, you would click on the, the square button up here, tap on it, and that would open up that record so you can see these in a larger view. And we could do that, but we're going to probably go to that uh, portal 
Well, let's just go there. We'll go there and you can see that these are in a larger view. And if I click on these, in some cases in the uh, iPad, it will give you a review, a, a view indicator up here where you can pop this up to see it in a larger size when you click on it. And if I click on it, you can cut, copy, paste, or delete the particular item that's in there for the per current time. If you change it here, it changes it back on the listing within the actual record. But you can do a find in here too by do action, use the find, and use the fields up here. You cannot uh, look on the uh, record down here for the for the uh, actual picture. The pictures cannot be uh, used to you know go do a search on obviously because there's nothing but data bits in there for the picture. Okay, coming back up here, we go back to property, and this would be the property portal for that particular property that you're showing. And this is kind of important in some respects. It gives you a, a better way to read the data as far as the data is concerned. If you look over here, you'll see, come down here, and it says the property showing portal, which is this portal. And then if I go look at the one below it, it's the property list view, and this is the current list of all the properties that are listed and this is where it comes into the do action and find and uh, perform a find if you're looking for a particular property or if you wanted to you could just click at the top and then bring you back into the record to this particular record property offer is exactly what it says uh, just so you're aware all the math is being done for you when you're doing the math in here uh, these bottom fields that are colored and these down here a lot of them are actually uh, calculated fields like these are calculated fields so you don't really enter data in there and let's talk about this the information for the offer comes in and you put the buyer's offer the person's name the buyer's information the uh, agency that actually is listing the property and you always want to have the listing and their number because this may be listed by a different realtor and you're actually showing a different property and then you want the email for the person that you're working with here in case you need to work with him as far as the buyer is concerned now obviously if you have an offer presented you have to have a buyer so when you have an offer that you're presenting the first thing you want to do is show the list price if there is a reduction in price then you show the reducted price you would have the property offer based on whatever the buyer uh, or probably the seller has in there as far as the selling uh, amount. Then if the seller property uh, is, is, has a counter, in other words, the seller uh, is countering to an, an offer that is less than the total. In this case, here's the buyer's offer being based on a 421 and he's come down here and said 412, a $6,000 difference when you come down here. The seller can, uh, can do a a uh, seller's counter offer here and it'll show the difference between the, the price that the guy had here he put it back up and there's a six thousand dollar difference now instead of ten thousand and if it is accepted by the seller then that accepted price would go in this particular area right here when I tap on it highlights and you go ahead and enter to the amount that is actually uh, accepted by the by the seller coming back down here you're gonna see the buyers loan now this is a little tricky so I'm gonna to have to go through this kind of slow you have a buyers first loan if the buyer has a first or another loan that totals the sum of all this 418 or whatever the final accepted amount is that would be for the final accepted amount it has to summarize to the 418 in this particular case if it was accepted at 418 or and it could be something else but you have to come down in here so that whatever this price is that you're working with here with it, whatever way you spread it through a first second a carry loan or an other loan or a buyer a real trade of some sort maybe they had a piece of property or something they're going to trade in then that would all be listed here until it comes up to whatever the sales accepted amount offer is in this area then as you put in information in here and how it's split up you can also include if you have a down payment and if the down payment is in there it's going to be earnest money basically in this case it would put that in there and what it's going to do it's going to take and calculate 108,000 minus the actual earnest money and then it's going to show you the balance difference in this particular on the first loan it's full amount of the first loan and in this particular case uh, it should deduct the amount of the uh, down and show you the difference after these are both in here it'll calculate these together to come up with whatever the balance is after the earnest money or down amount was put in 
So you can see it says in here, earnest money or amount down second on the second. In this particular case, he probably borrowed the 108 or had cash, but whatever he did, he came up with additional money instead of financing it over here in the finance side. So this is all the stuff that has to be financed on this side, and this is effectively a $30,000 down for that particular piece of property. And this is the sum of the amount that has to be carried for financing. So this is the minus down minus the, the uh, earnest money or down payment. So this is what would be in here. Now, obviously, the property was sold at whatever this figure is down here, 418000 So you would put in the buyer's move-in date, the seller's move-in date required, if there's something different other than that, what the buyer wants, the amount of the interest for the agency, that, and the broker's fee would be calculated based on the numerics that you had up here based on the interest. The seller's loan balance, if he has any loan balance, would have to be added in here because that has to be handled. And the loan balance has to be uh, amended to either the buyer or seller, whatever they negotiate. And then the seller's net amount would be this, obviously, with the broker's fees taken out. So the seller's loan balance that is due would be the 100000 uh, on the current property that he had carrying. So he'd have to carry a part of that or have it assumed by the buyer, obviously. But this is the information. And then, of course, down here, you would go ahead and put in any numeric or and or text information that supports how you came up to this offer. And then if you have the same thing goes for if you present the offer, you should take the information that you presented to the client and then put it in here. And this is a scrolling screen, so you can have any number of offers on this property. Say, for example, for example Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones came in, or whoever we had up here at the top, he made an offer, and then the next day Mr. Smith came in and made it an offer. Obviously, they're competing, uh, competing ones. And of course, you can always come back in here later on and look at the actual information that was in the offer so you have the information to compare to the next offer that's being portrayed. Obviously, if, if he turned down one offer and you're coming in to make another one and it's in a short time afterward, you're probably going to assume that the seller is going to not want to take anything less than he had in the last offer. It's really going to be up to the buyer whether or not they're going to agree to the 418000 over the 421 of the actual uh, price of the uh, property. Now, in this particular case, I'm trying to get the uh, the actual top of the screen to come back down where it shows offer presented. And in some cases, I got to kind of click on it to get it to come in on this this uh, this uh, simulation sometimes hangs up on me. So the buyer's offer now when I bring it back or you can just close it and bring it right back up. It'll come up and show you everything you want to see. That's probably the fastest way to do it. So for example, if I jam it all up, I can always go back, click off and click back and get it back in again for the offer. And in this particular case, it wants to do it again to me. So I can just say, OK, offer. In this case, it's going to play that game again. Oh, I can scroll it down. It's not a big deal. OK, so let's go up to the property finance. Now, this is a situation for your records especially when it's going through escrow and the title company's doing their thing. You want to take anything that's related to the uh, financing. For example, uh, if the person was pre-approved, they would have uh, the sum to be financed, the escrow company. If it was a lawyer that's being used to work out the, uh, the fine figures and all that stuff for the escrow and so forth and the title company and what they're going to agree to, you could have all that information here, like the lawyer's company, uh, the bank that's doing the first and all this rest rest of this stuff for carrying the loans would all be put in here because you have to submit this as a loan package if the buyer doesn't already have a company that's already set up or a bank to do all the handling of all the financing. But you still need to put that stuff in here so that you have a record of it because you're going to have to do your own paperwork uh, to cover all the little aspects of your uh, uh, the complete realtor information set up here. OK, so we have also the dates and information. These are all lined out, the lawyer, the lawyer end date, the escrow company, the bank and the bank approval, and the money funded, and so forth, all the way down here. And then owner carry notes as far as what the owner needs to know at this point, as far as how, who's going to carry what as far as a note is concerned. And if you have a, a owner carry, you need to put in the information for the owner carry loan, like he may hold back either a second or something else as far as this is concerned, and you may need to put some information in there as far as that's concerned. 
Okay, let's go to the next thing, property payment. This is a way to calculate an estimated amount that this particular person is going to get as far as the loan is concerned. So you have the first, the second, the loan, and other loan, and interest rates, and the month's term. And then what it'll do is it'll produce a uh, amount as far as the loan is concerned. So you'd put in the sum to be financed. In this particular case, it would be whatever came, uh, comes over from the other side that should go in here as far as like 418 or whatever it's going to be as far as added to the loan amount. Since there's no loan amounts in here yet, it's not going to bring it down for the sum to be financed until you actually enter those amounts here. And they need to be put in there for that information. And once again, I double clicked and kind of threw everything out of kilter. And of course, you can always zoom in and make it a little easier to work with too. I'm going to go ahead and pull it back and then pull it back in so you can see how you zoom in if you were using uh, touch and uh, gestures. OK, there is also a graph in here. And basically what the graph does is it shows the amount of the financed amount and all that stuff as far as a running real estate sales by month type of a situation. So if you had multiple in there for month, you would go out and do a find for the records that you had in there for that particular period, for that particular listed property, and it would actually show you a graph of the money that was brought in during that period. Uh, there's also a little tutorial we're going to be doing about how you can create your own uh, charts and graphs if you want to, and we'd have to show you how you do that. It's kind of interesting. Okay, property map. In case you needed it, it would give you the property map for directions to the property where you're actually having a listing set up. So if you had to find the listing in the location, you could do the map to find the location and get the directions to that particular location. And of course, it'll pop up a map. Now, like I said before, I'm using some bandwidth, so this is a little slow. I'm actually uploading uh, videos like this one to uh, YouTube, so it's going to be a little slower today. Data portal. What is a data portal? Any kind of important information that is related to paperwork or whatever, you can actually paste into here. Now, these are old stuff that I had in here before. You can put in, and I, in detail, it has, there was a little thing that explains this right here, how to add this. But basically, if you put a URL in here of where this document is, or in this case, if it's a graphic that you want to put in there and you didn't paste it straight in, for example, or replace the one that's in and paste it in, you could actually put a URL of the actual image here and then click in the field and say insert it by clicking on this button here. It'll insert the picture that's related to that particular URL. Now, if this is a URL that you want to go visit, in other words, and there's information there that is from a picture, but you have the URL for the actual location of it, you can say open it and what it'll do is it'll open the website for whatever the URL is that is in here. And the particular thing that's in here looks pretty bogus, so that's not the right thing. And if you want to see this in a large view, you can go to go to the portal, and now you have a large view of the image that's there in that particular screen, and you can work on whatever you want to, like insert graphics and stuff like that from here, or you can go to the actual website from here also. Okay, let's drop this down and go back to the property listing, and that covers everything that's covered in these screens. The next screens that we're going to be talking about is the property inspection screens. And from this screen, I want to cover the last thing. You can go to the list view for all the listings for here and use the do action button. Let's go over there and see that. You can come over here and you can use the do action button to find a piece of property. Now we came over here briefly, but you could do a find. And basically what you do is you go ahead and you can click in the record or whatever you want and then start the the find and you'll see it flips over and it'll give you one record. In that record, you put anything that matches. Now, what I've done in some of these is I actually have drop downs that are preset like this that you can pick without having to type anything in. And in this particular case, something like the MRLS number, you would probably take it, copy it from the last page and put it in there. Uh, listing broker and these kind of things, dates and stuff like that. Now, you can combine any number of different fields to restrict the actual cop, uh, the uh, find that you're doing down to a specific maybe record or in some cases where it says listed for a client uh, you can type in the first few characters of the, num uh, the name of the person the listed client and that would bring up the client record in this case if you're bringing up something like the property it really helps 
to find the individual one. And then I have a thing here where if the listed for client is up here, there is the listed for client. So you could see it and know what you're going to be putting in this field. You could just put the first few characters in the name and the address and it'll automatically know where to go.